around. So, yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. So how does one start even building one of these? Like, where do you even start sourcing all the parts and like? Yeah, it's a challenge, uh, especially in these times that uh, um, we've done it for so many years, it just happens automatically. Um, but there's, you know, a lot of different suppliers and a lot of different components and you've got to try and get that all to come in at the same time so you can complete an engine. Um, you know, like I said, the blocks, you know, have been up to 12 months. Uh, crankshafts, you know, might be three or four months. There's other stuff you can get you know, almost straight away, um, and that's always changing now. You know, uh, pre-COVID, it was pretty good. You could just accumulate just about everything in a couple of months, yeah, and and start from scratch. Now you've got to plan probably the season before the next season, yeah, right. and uh, it's a massive amount more stock we've got to keep. You know, because of the supply is uh, very flaky. Yeah, yeah. So how long would you be looking at building one from top to bottom, time-wise? Once we've got all the parts, uh, well, we do all our own machining. Generally, that goes through in batches and all that sort of stuff. But uh, I, I guess from start to finish, you, you're going to, and by the time you dyno it and everything like that, it's going to be two weeks. Yeah. But you don't do it that way. You don't just do, you know, we've got, I don't know, 60 odd engines sitting in the workshop at the moment. So you've got to do a bit of everything and. Yeah. Yeah. To try and keep them going out the door, sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. 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 Especially now, it's a lot more unorganised these days because um, pre-COVID we'd pull maybe 10 apart and then get the parts ordered for them, get them all track tested, machined and all that, then pull the next batch apart. But because you've got to get the parts um, so much earlier, than, and you've got to get everything apart, you know, so there's bits and pieces everywhere. It's really a challenge to keep it still half organised. Yeah. Is that uh, like regular site, the C60 sitting here? Like about a normal normal number, or is that no? Like, that's probably a bit high. It's just yeah, it's as high as it's been for a long time, I think. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, like prior to you getting here today, we probably spent three hours this afternoon moving engines around because we're just running out of floor space. <laughs> Found other places to put them <laughs> up the top, and, um, and and that yeah, it's yeah, it's a challenge. And the engines are coming in from everywhere, aren't they? Like all over Australia, you got. You got a bunch over New Zealand as well. Got quite a few in New Zealand. Um, got a couple in America. Um, the Williams Motorsport. I've got a, a uh, association with Ashley who runs the team over there. He's an Adelaide boy. Uh, he used to crew for Phil March. Um, uh, he he lives over there. Lived over there for quite a while now. And I've done his stuff um, for a long time now. It, logistically, it's not really viable um, with the freight and, and all of that sort of stuff but it's just pretty cool to keep in touch and you know, they're based in California and see how the stuff runs so I've always done their stuff I've got one back at the moment we're doing for them so how many you got in America in total well they, they've got three motors over there yeah, so yeah. there's no other sort of float around out anywhere or not that I know of yeah. <laughs> not at this stage we've had other customers over there that have gone over there and raced um, and taken our stuff over there, but um, uh, as far as a regular over there, it's mainly just been the Williams Motorsport team. Because that's probably the one thing that people sort of might not know is the logistics about sending a motor back and forth is, yeah, you know, that can sort of, someone can be like hot property in the engine game, but, you know, they might live so far away that freighting engines back and forth just becomes yeah. a, a hassle. That's Especially now with the freight, the freight's um, obviously quite a lot dearer, there's quite a lot of surcharges on air freight and things like that, which has made it quite expensive. I mean, to, to air freight a, a motor backwards and forwards, it's probably a minimum of five grand. To America? Yeah, backwards and forwards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, probably more like six. Yeah, that was one thing that I heard, was that like a water container, a full container pre-COVID, you could bring bring out for like three, four, five grand and now yeah. they're upwards of like twenty eight to thirty two thousand dollars and that's yeah. where the just the cost of everything yeah. is skyrocketing. Well it's not only that, you know, if you decide to sea freight them, which is a lot cheaper if you can get them into a loaded container, um, the containers have been quite unreliable with, with um, when they ship and um, whether they make the ship or don't make the ship and there's, there's all sorts of um, delays on that side of things. Um, we have nearly always air freighted them and just 
pay the money and the way to do it. They'll turn up the next week. Yeah. So how many motors sort of come in and out a week? Oh, yeah. it's uh, At the moment, uh, more are coming in than going out. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we've had weeks, you know, where five, six motors turn up. Um, and uh, But it's, it's this time of year, it's pretty steady. You know, they're all... And they, you know, I'm stressing to people, you need to get them back early um, for us to have a chance to get them done by the start of the season. Whereas in the past, you know, I'd say, oh, don't send it until August or something, which they have done. Yeah, but we just can't guarantee that now. Um, you know, everything's so custom these days in, in the motors. In the old days, you know, it'd be a set of J pistons, part number something, and you'd get them off the shelf. Now, you know, there's, there's, everything's um, just so custom, even the cranks and everything. There's, um, there's so many variations you can put on things. That, um, yeah, it's just nearly impossible to, to keep stock of everything. Yeah, but when I said before that the technology hasn't really evolved in the sprint cars, probably it, the, the basis of it hasn't changed, but the technology within the parts itself and the way they're manufactured mm. would have changed drastically. Yeah, oh, massively. Massively, the, the quality of the components you can get now is, um, you know, is really, um, you know, in the last few years it's, it's taken another step um, um, with how. Um, you know, sophisticated that stuff's getting, but how expensive it's getting too. Yeah. Have you like ever considered like making your own parts of any any type or anything like that? Or uh, not really. No. Just no. Not, not viable. Um, it probably is. You know, when the when the dollar's quite low, it probably is viable. When the dollar's you know eighty cents plus, I suppose it, it isn't. You know, you won't you won't be able to compete. Um, uh, price wise, you know, but you know, I took a trip to um, performance wholesale a couple of weeks ago, and they're they're making their own heads and blocks, and you know, they're having a they're having a pretty good go at uh, manufacturing some stuff. Yeah, uh, just for sprint car. Yeah, yeah, and that's based around necessity. Pretty well. Yeah, yeah. yeah Not, there's, there's obviously a space in the market for it as well. Absolutely. But like the, yeah, yeah. The, getting to the necessity of. Yeah, it's great to see someone that's going back to making stuff here. Oh, I'd like to buy local, um, for sure. Um, but uh, it's yeah, for the outlay um, to make the stuff, it's not a huge market, you know, because most of the stuff now is um, pretty custom 410 sprint car. It doesn't, you know, the blocks, you know, they wouldn't even bolt in a road car, you know, the, there's yeah. no way to bolt starter motor and, and all that. It's just so customised to a sprint car application that, you know, so you've only got a market of however many competitors in Australia. It's, you know, um, it's a it's a brave move. So. Yeah. Yeah, and unless you could really make it work in the American market, but then you get to run into that trouble with the freight and engines back and forth and that. That's yeah, right. It's, yeah, so then you kind of screw yourself over there. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, it's a... Yeah, it's a very interesting sort of saga to have, though, isn't it? Like, oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And it's, you know, it's one of the challenges of um, uh, building the engines, too. You know, there's most of your engine builders around the place. There's not a component in that engine they make. Yet yeah. Whenever you, you know, you go to the races, you know, oh, you know, there's so-and-so's engine blew up. It's normally component failure. Well, we, we didn't make any of the components. We've just, you know, our job is to try and source the best component for the most reasonable price, um, you know, and the lightest and everything, but still get reliability out of it. Yeah. So it's a, that's a real challenge. Yeah, because that's, what's one of the most common part failures? Because you quite often hear about like, oh, such and such has done a motor or they, you know, they, or the engine blew up in that heat, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it blew the smithereens. It's They're thing. normally a tune-up related failure uh, is the most common, um, which will be you know, uh, a burn down or, you know, a piston will break or, you know, it'll blow the gaskets or or um, um, drop valves or something like that. Uh, that's probably the most common. Um, but, you know, being a push rod engine, the, the overhead gear is, you know, really, you know, quite vulnerable because most of them don't have rev limiters on them. You know, they can jump wheels and go through wet patches and the things will the revs are you know 10 grand um and they're not very all that stuff isn't very happy at, at when it does that there's you know where 